Could you please explain the unholy alliance between the left and the forces and the, uh, the Muslim supremacists, considering that the, pr the premises and the, s the principles of both of them are mutually incompatible? Okay, so they're not mutually incompatible to point A, they are to point B. What I mean is that it's a timeline. The left wants to tear down Western civilization because it thinks it's unequal. The radical Muslims want to tear down Western civilization because they think it's evil. So to the point of tearing down Western civilization, they're pretty much on the same page. It's where they go from there that's a problem, right? One side wants to build a caliphate and the other side wants to build a communist utopia. The, the, the reason that the left is routinely, and it, it's almost invariable, that the left ends up siding with the world's worst human beings in every situation is because, again, if you just go back to that fundamental leftist principle that equality of outcome is all that matters in life, that equality of outcome means that something just is happening, think about it. The real world is a place where God designed it this way. I believe this. God designed it not for every individual, but certainly for the vast bulk of humanity. If you do responsible good things with your life, you will be more successful than if you do irresponsible bad things with your life. Well, if the left believes that people who are unsuccessful are more virtuous, then what that means is that the non-virtuous are more virtuous, right? Because the people who are unsuccessful are generally not doing good, responsible things. And the left says, well, those people are victims. Let's help them, right? So the Muslims in the Middle East are victims of Israel. They must be victims of Israel because Israel's rich and its neighbors are not. So they must be victims. Well, the real reason that the Muslims, the Palestinian Muslims, for example, are poor is because they've spent all the money that has been given to them, hundreds of billions of dollars, all the money that's been given to them over the course of decades, and they've spent it on terrorism, and they've spent it on stocking it away in their bank accounts of Yasser Arafat and Mahmoud Abbas, and they've spent it on garbage, and they've spent it on anti-Israel propaganda. That's the real reason they're poor, but the left looks at it and they say, they're poor, that means they're virtuous. This is why I hate it, really despise it. When Republicans do the whole, I'm a better person because I have a rags to riches story, you weren't a better person when you're poor. Okay, no one is a better person just because they're poor. By the way, no one's a better person because they're rich. All that wealth is is a measure of how many voluntary exchanges you engaged in in a free market. That's all that, that's all that, that wealth is. But the, the idea for the left is that all inequality is evil. Therefore, the people who are unequal at the top are evil and the people at the bottom are virtuous. Which is why you'll hear people on the left say things like they like small business, but they hate people who are big business, like the Walmart family, right? the Walton family. They're terrible. Well, were they terrible when they were just a family living in the middle of nowhere? When, when exactly did they transition over into evil? Right? When they became successful enough, because their success meant by necessity, according to the leftist worldview, they were depriving others of, of their fair share. And Bernie Sanders said this right after winning New Hampshire the other night. And this is Bernie Sanders' entire thing. He says, the principle of America is the principle of fairness which makes me want to vomit and never stop vomiting. <laughs> the principle of America is not fairness of outcome. And he was talking about fairness of outcome. He said, oh, how, it's unfair that 1% of the population lives with more wealth than 90% of the rest of the population. <laughs> and well, maybe, or maybe it's not unfair because it turns out that 1% of the population is hiring the other 90% of the population to actually provide their services and labor. So, um, a lot, in a lot of these social justice circles, you know, a lot of them lie on the left of the, uh, left of the aisle. They believe in these, uh, you know, social justice causes. But in a lot of these really super liberal countries in Europe, such as like Sweden, France, Belgium, you see a a lot of covering for a lot of more problematic and radical, radicalized beliefs of Islam, like, um, such as like... No, I read you. I read you. Yeah. Okay. And this kind of goes back with the video you made about a year ago about the myth of the tiny radical... Uh, Muslim, yeah, the, the, the tiny radical Muslim minority, yeah. So why do you think that liberals are so quick to uh, sort of judge uh, imagined racism in white people and white Americans? Yet they seem to cover for it in uh, Islam. Yes, this is a good question. It is a good question. So the, the question is for people who, I mean, we have a mic, so I assume everybody heard it. But the basic question was, why is it that the left seems so comfortable siding with radical Islam in so many situations around the world? And the answer is because leftist philosophy is based on the philosophy of the oppressed versus the oppressor. Right? The way that the left judges the world is based on equality of outcome. All that matters is that everybody ends up equal. It doesn't matter equal opportunity. Leftism is based on the fundamental premise that everybody should end up the same. So if there are two guys in a room, one guy has $4 and one guy has $1, the guy with four must have exploited the guy with one. Or if there's a homeless guy and Bill Gates, Bill Gates must have exploited the homeless guy somehow, even if the homeless guy can't afford a crappy version of Windows. Or he must have exploited him. Well, the same holds true internationally. So if you look internationally, Islamic countries tend to be incredibly poor because they're badly run and because they're oppressive and because they're tyrannical. 
And because all of that is true, these countries do not do well on the international stage. The left, however, just sees impoverished country, super wealthy America, super wealthy West. Western civilization must have made them poor through colonialism and imperialism. Therefore, we owe some sort of blood guilt on this. And so we have to be warm toward, a, toward, toward what are essentially philosophies of people who are, who are, who are impoverished. This is, so the, the left believes that, that ideology, religious ideology, is basically just a, a, a sheer cover on poverty. Right? The only reason that, that radical Muslims are radical is not because of radical Islam. They're radical Muslims because, they're, because, they, are, because they are poor. And so if we could just rectify that situation, everything would be hunky-dory. That's, that's why they're so warm. They, they side with the oppressed versus the oppressor, and the oppressed are always the people who are poor, even if the oppressed are actually the oppressors and killing people.